people people that don't come to Vegas often or have never been to Vegas yeah. they see it and I'm I'm sad by this saddened by this because they're seeing something that has never existed in Vegas. Yeah. Um and and they're seeing there's unfortunately they're seeing the tourist trap that Vegas is almost immediately. Yeah. There's the parking issues if you, as yes. you've described. There's the eating, you know, I mean you either you either, you know, d- dive into your wallet and and mortgage your house for a for a meal yeah. or you go way down the line and you get something that's inferior, you know, and and isn't really tasty. Yeah. And it, and you know the, the it's just very difficult now. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah, it I mean, it, when we first were here, um, oh gosh, twenty seven, no, twenty five years ago for me. Um, you know, it was an exciting place. You know, and it it was still had some. Uh, the people are going to call me on the mat on this, but the, it had some innocence to it. It was no longer the major market. Raider Town, yeah, you know? exactly. We, we we didn't have the parking issues. You know, you went and parked and you left. You know, yeah. it, was, it wasn't a big deal. But yeah, it, it's uh, um, you know, and 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 I and I think that MGM and Caesars, although although Caesars, of course, is embroiled in its in its takeover, you know, issues right now. But I think, especially the MGM, they're they're actually there's a little bit of a comeuppance there. Because they they said, oh, we're going to charge for this, we're going to charge for this, we're going to charge for this, and we're going to change this, and we're going to make this smaller, and we're going to make this bigger, and you know, screw everybody. And and well, I think I think the public is, I think the outcry is finally reaching them. They're realizing their gaming's don't going down. Their restaurants are going. Their their revenue under for food way down. Yeah. And I think they're finally realizing that there were there were parts about old Vegas that needed to stay because it's we're not cool anymore yeah it's just not cool anymore yeah yeah it, they didn't seem to understand that the, you know the the psychology of the consumer mm. you know people will drive across town to save a nickel on gas a uh, nickel a gallon on gas <laughs> right and, and i thought you know your my time isn't worth it first of all it costs you money to go out there because you just went out of your way so there's a little bit of a, the added expense but there's also your time how much is your time worth to you is 20 minutes of your time worth a dollar well i hope so because if you're working, you're probably making more than $3 an hour. Hmm. So, you you know, if you save a nickel, 10 cents a gallon on gas, and you fill it up with, you know, 18 gallons, you you saved yourself at, you know, what, a dollar eighty, maybe $2. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so is it really worth your time to do that? You know, um, my sister some years ago had one of those, um, one of those postal places we used to call like mailboxes ETC. I think uh-huh. this was called Postal Annex, which would her, would that franchise was telling them to do and my sister did and it was wrong but but she did it anyway was and i understand her her point of view well was that they would charge whatever it is what's a stamp call i mean i use those forever stamps so i don't know let's say it's uh, 45 cents 40 okay for whatever it is well, it's 49 well, but 40. Right. back then it was 45 <laughs> okay. so, so she would charge 50 cents yeah. and people would be pissed off yeah well she would say go downtown then you yeah. to the main post office in santa rosa You'd have to put money in the meter to go in the post office mm-hmm. to buy the stamp. There is a convenience. Mm-hmm. So there were some people who were smart and says, you know what? I'm not going to listen to the I'm going to sell it for 45 cents All right? because people will buy something else. But they'll be pissed off if they have to pay 50 cents for a 45 cent stamp. Yeah. It's just, you know, without even thinking, well, yeah, you know, I'm saving time. I don't have to go downtown. I'm going to put 10 cents in the meter anyway right. to wait to wait and go in the post office, at least 10 cents. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't they don't think like that. Um, MGM seems to think that, you know, and other hotels are not the only ones mm-hmm. um, that, you know, we can we can fuck people over. And they're not going to notice because they're stupid. Um, my tickets to see, you know, uh, Psycho Las Vegas. I'm right. going again. They advertise the tickets are two hundred and forty nine dollars. Now that's for three days. Okay. Plus little little small font. Yeah. Tax and fees. Tax okay, and fees. okay. Yeah. So you I want I want the three day pass, two forty nine. Click mm-hmm. the button. Mm-hmm. Two seventy one. That's <laughs> okay, that's nine percent extra. Okay, that's the tax, I suppose. Nine percent. Seems yeah. a little high. Okay. So I want two tickets, two seventy one. Okay, I'm looking at you, you know, I'm looking at uh, Five hundred and forty-two dollars, and mm-hmm. something like that. Six thirty-five. Wait a minute, where is it? Oh, the fees. Fees. There's a twelve-dollar convenience fee. Convenient for what? 
I think what because I can buy them online. I don't have to go to the box office. Well, it's convenient for them. They don't have to. They don't have to deal with it. Right. I'm printing the fucking tickets out on my own on my own printer. Mm-hmm. They don't even have to do that. Twelve dollar convenience fee. Thirty two dollars and fifty cents convention fee. Uh-huh, it's not a yeah. convention. It's a heavy metal concert. Right. You know. It's so thirty two dollars. So why can't they just be up front and say it's three hundred dollars a ticket? Yeah. If I do that, I pay six hundred bucks. I know what I'm into. Yeah. But don't tell me it's two forty nine and then add all this other shit at the end, thinking that I'm too stupid to look. Yeah. You know. And the same thing, like I said, with with, with the parking. Yeah. You caught. I could have bought another drink or something. I could have spent it there. You don't need to gouge me for the parking. There's just no need for that. Oh, I know. You know. I know. It's terrible. You know. It, it, that brings up something I, I read about recently. And Las Vegas is one of the cities involved in it. Uh, and I didn't know much about it. Uh, but there's, uh, are you familiar with hidden city travel? No. Well, apparently there are websites, um, that, that will help you do this. I don't know if there's a fee involved, but they will help you, um, figure this out. And, and so I'll try to explain it the easiest way. But again, Las Vegas is one of these cities where it's, uh, it's involved in this type of a trick and there's a loophole in the airline travel pricing. Yeah. Where, let's say, you're going to go to New York from Los Angeles. And that's a pricey ticket. Yeah. Especially if you're late in getting it. Uh, you know, you're not a couple of months ahead of, ahead of your flight. Yeah. Ahead of your time. So, L.A. to New York, expensive ticket. L.A. to Puerto Rico, r- much less. Way less. Like, like, in the hundreds of dollars less. So what they do is they book the flight to Puerto Rico with a stop in New York, and go. Oh off. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yes, and then yes. just stay in New York. Yes. Okay. I, I've but, heard that. But like you're saying, you know that we're being punished as consumers. Now the loophole is there. That is the situation. Now security issues aside. Now obviously you can't check a bag. You gotta, you gotta be, you know, with it, with just a carry on. Yeah. Um, and there's, a, you know, all, all these little tiny tricks that you gotta make sure of. Yeah. But there, the loophole exists. And the article that I was reading was was the airlines are looking into the, the legalities of it and are now uh, tasking their agents to start asking John, what are you gonna do in Puerto Rico? And if the person says, well, if he's, if he's just a stump and too dumb yeah. to remember that he's cheating on this, he'll say something, you know, like, well, I plan to do this and visit my mom in Puerto Rico. Or the dumb ones say, well, I'm going to New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and now they're looking to see, they're trying to deem it illegal. Yeah. You know, it, and they're punishing us. They're punishing us as consumers for, for finding this loophole and, yeah. and, and exploiting it. Now, here's another one that I heard. Um, you know, it's cheaper, but internationally anyway. Mm. If you buy, I was just pricing the tickets to Japan. Um, it, if a, a, a one way ticket in, in November is $850, mm. round trip, go and come back, 550 <laughs> Right. All right, that makes no sense. So you say, well, why don't I just buy the round trip and then toss it? No, 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 no. They'll keep track of you. Yeah. And say, so you need to use that ticket. Yeah. Now, in the old days, getting back by that, I mean the 90s, and I laugh about it now. I mean, when you think about security, there were used to be ads in the Japan Times. That was the English language paper in, in, that came out of, in Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there would be foreigners that, you know, they had a, they had a round trip ticket, but they only using it one way. Right. Maybe they found a job or they were extending or whatever. They they can't use a ticket because uh, in the time limit that was that that's allotted. Sure, they would sell that ticket. Now what they would do is they would meet you at the airport. You'd call them on the phone. Yeah, I want to buy your ticket. Okay, because they know the prices went up and down and they would be cheap. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll meet you at the airport. They would check in your bag and then just give you the boarding pass, mm-hmm. and then you would just get on the plane. Yeah, they never checked your ID to see if you matched the. You know, they never did any of that. Yeah. So I mean, it's ridiculous. What? Why is it that? One way, I mean, come on, it's, I, I can't even understand if you said it costs the same. You got a free ticket over it, but don't, it shouldn't be less. I you know, it, no, it's, totally it's kind of silly. And, yeah. and, oh, it was also announced yesterday uh, on the 1st of August that um, the resort fees, I believe it's MGM, could be Caesars, oh, they're up, all going up, up to $45. $45? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Again, they haven't learned that, you know, um, uh, you know, if you say, I, I, great deal, 
and I've seen this, I used to get emails from the Hard Rock, mm-hmm. $99 a night. Well, I'm not going to say I live here. But nevertheless, you know, I look at it, so that's a good price. It's a party at your house yeah. all the time, John. With a little tiny <laughs> asterisk, yeah. And I look down there, and a little, little, little three-point font, yeah, yeah, plus $33 a night resort yeah. fee at that time. Yeah. I said, well, you see, now, now now, they're fucking with you. Yeah. Why don't they just say, you know, $125, $130 a night? That's still a good rate. Yeah. That's a really good rate. But yeah. it, but when you tell me $99, mm-hmm. and then you say, oh, yeah, we're the, now I'm pissed off, yeah. right? I this mean, this is a they third of your room. That's it's getting it's getting to the point where our resort fees are going to be a night's stay. Yes, yeah, yes. And that's easy. We're we're within sight of it. Yes, at forty five yeah. bucks. Yeah, instead yeah. of a two for one, it is. It's a two for one. You pay for two nights and you stay for one. <laughs> that's exactly. That's right. And they want to. How come nobody comes to here anymore? That's right. The town that used to give stuff away. I know. Or so they thought. You, you can't. Know? It, it, it's really hard to even find a hot dog anymore. They, you, uh, Lady Luck. Had the best foot long hot dogs. It was yeah. free. Bring your ID. It was a, like a Hebrew national. Yeah. It was a giant hot dog. It was so fun to go down there because Lady Luck is a is a, is pit. a dump. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you went there for the hot dog. Yeah. It was great. It was fantastic. You know who who learned that trick? You know, is Costco. Uh, they yeah. sell those hot dogs <laughs> yeah. too. I mean, I don't need them, but I say, Jesus, that's cheap. Of course, it's cheap. Yeah. They don't care. They're not there to make money on everything. I know. And people, I'm going to go to Costco. And, and no one's just going to go to Costco for the hot dog. They're going to buy something else, yeah. right? Yeah. So it is. It's, it's, it makes it kind of an event. Well, I got. <laughs> go to Costco I really don't want to go you know I could love no all that shit oh I know what he wants that's horrible oh but hey I can get a hot dog yes for, for next to nothing and yeah. it's yeah, yeah. It's, it doesn't matter it's killing you yeah so 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 what we're talking about on, on this or what episode we're bitching and moaning we're, about. yeah we're complaining about <laughs> um, is is the Vegas that we the, the old Vegas the bygone era of Vegas and that's what we're talking about to, on this episode is is you know it's gone away what has gone away, you know, and and we're just remembering instead of complaining, we're going to talk about some nice things, some yeah. of the nice old places that are gone. Uh, plus, we have a little bit of a tribute, but I'm going to open up here because uh, people always talk about in the 1900s uh, Vegas becoming a town. Yeah, but that's not when it was named. Las Vegas was named by a gentleman by, by the name of Rafael Rivera. In 1821, he was the first to step foot on the land. Yeah. He's the person that named it the Meadows. The Meadows, why? Yes, it was nothing but sand. It was because of the it was because of the grasses that wow. were here that he saw, and he named it. it the now Meadows. we have the grasses hopper. Yeah, right. Grasshoppers. <laughs> I mean, That's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, in Vegas and and grass is a whole new meeting now, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Um. And uh. But it was in 1821, and he was he was scouting for a group, uh, that would ultimately uh, uh form the Old Spanish Trail. They were they were scouting for uh, locations uh, to uh, through which to travel yeah. for trade. Yeah. So 1821. That and that is truly bygone. Uh, yeah. But um, uh, John has. Uh, we we learned recently that that a, a friend of John's, a friend of the town, and someone who I think uh, was was truly a member. Of the bygone community of Vegas has yeah. passed. Yeah, John, who was that? Yeah, it was Gary Darwin. Uh, I've mentioned him on on the podcast before. Gary was very influential, really, in the magic underground um, and w- among magicians. His kind of adopted son, so to speak, was you know Lance Burton. They're very good friends. In fact, it was Lance Burton who made the announcement. I saw that on on one of the uh, on one of the magic community. Uh, um, uh, message boards mm-hmm. um, that that Gary had died, and uh, it was really sad. You know, Gary had been a he was uh, a very accomplished amateur. Um, you only use that word loosely. Usually, think of amateur somebody's not very good at something. He was a pure professional. It's just that he didn't make his money doing that. Most most guys don't. Most some of the really top magicians in the world among magicians um, weren't didn't make it. That wasn't their living. Uh, Darwin had been a bellman. Mm-hmm. And he was also a very talented caricature artist, and he would sit in the lobby. He would tell me, you know, he was he'd been at the uh, at the Riviera, and uh, he was a bellman there in the day in the '60s. And you know, he would the celebrities would come and go. Frank Sinatra, he'd draw a picture and hand it to him. Here you go, Mr. Sinatra. Oh, thanks. He was very good. He was the only celebrity I ever had who w- wasn't thankful or appreciative of of the caricatures that he drew was M- Martina Navratilova, the the tennis player. She basically threw it back at him. Wow. So, yeah. And, and uh, you know, he said, yeah, he did it for everybody. And, and he had some great stories. And I really regret that, you know, I had said this before, Jamie, that, you know, I was going to go see him. 
and uh, get him on the get him on the podcast because he's done a lot of magic podcasts, but he hadn't done one I don't think for uh, like ours. Uh, and I didn't get around to it. And then you know he he got he got ill and and uh, and he died. So yeah. uh, we won't have that. But one of him, one of my favorite stories that he told, Gary, Gary knew a joke. For any occasion, he would say, <laughs> "Tell me a Thanksgiving turkey joke." I, I don't know one. Do you? Do you know what I mean about a thing? He knew one. He knew a joke about everything. Mm. And he, the thing was, is even he he really wanted it to be a clean joke, so to speak. He always thought that 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 you know you could tell a dirty joke, a vulgar joke, and they're funny. But they're but but try to tell a clean joke to an adult that's and it's hard sometimes that they get really good ones that that that, that aren't somehow risque in, in a way that that still appeal to adults. And Gary knew all of those. But he told me, uh, some uh, a guest came to the hotel back in the 60s, uh, a woman. I think it was a woman that probably men of our father's gen- generations would have described as a broad. Okay. All right? <laughs> right. So right. so she's there to gamble. Okay. Right? And play. So he hauls her bags up to the, to the room, and she says, I need a pack of smokes. <laughs> <laughs> right? right so he goes down the lobby he's a bellman right so he goes down and he gets he buys a pack of cigarettes for 35 50 cents whatever it was back right. then he goes oh, up gosh. and he hands it to yeah. her he goes oh i'm a little strapped right now will you take it out and trade <laughs> 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 well hey he's up there for it's not only the 35 cents it's his tip he should get on top of it sure. right for running the bags yeah. so i asked him, well how was she he said, well, she was worth 50 cents. <laughs> but it just captures for me just that whole era of what, what went on. Right. You know, this is, remember, at a time when TV shows could not show a, you know, a, a TV family, uh, a husband and a wife sleeping in the same bed. Yeah. You know, you think about a Mary Tyler Moore show. You think about Leave it to Beaver. Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van yeah. Dyke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They had separate beds. Right. And they had kids. You wonder, hmm, where do they come from? I think <laughs> I think Brady Bunch was the first show that where they actually slept in the same bed. Yes. You were, where you saw them. I think but, you're correct. So, yeah, in, the, in that era, I think sometimes you get this false idea that things were a little more innocent back then. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and and it showed uh, th- that those stories alone yeah. show there was a thoughtful process in the hospitality industry. Yeah, Gary uh, Darwin was was glad to go get a, yes. a pack of cigarettes. Garnered a wonderful story from them. Yeah. The woman was probably quite thrilled uh, by the cigarettes and anything else she got. Yeah. Um, and, and it was, a, it was a consumer relationship that is no longer here yes, in Vegas. Yes. Gary told me he made more money as a bellman in the sixties than when he retired, which was in nine, uh, 2000. I think he retired 2000, 1999, 2000, something mm-hmm. like that. He had retired and he said it was due purely to the corporatization of everything. Sure. Even, even now you think about, uh, could a bellman spend that much time in a room? I don't care if he's only there five minutes. Yeah. Where were you? You know, you, 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 everything is time stamped, everything. They want to know where you're at. How many times did I get in trouble after being asked by the casino when I worked at the Venetian? We got a Japanese guest. I went in there and I helped him and I was gone for 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I came back to the desk. Where were you? I said, you know where I went. You were the one that told me to go in the casino and help. You were gone too long. <laughs> right you know so right. so i get reprimanded for that i got written up two or three times for that so yeah you know. you know and 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 that's one of the reasons why i i sort of give a little bit of a break to the to the hospitality workers yeah um yeah because they are so constricted by those rules the corporate rules um but you know i don't give them a hundred percent break because they normally they can't be bothered yeah and the corporations their answer to that le- that sort of Gary Darwin esque level of of care that he gave to his customers, their answer is to say the person's name three times. Yeah, it's like, well, Mister Thorpe, Mister Thorpe, Mister Thorpe, and and now suddenly, you know, we care yeah. about you. Yeah, you know, yeah. You no, know, all we do is now we know your name. Yeah, yeah. And what Gary had told me was, you know, when when the mafia ran really, pretty much ran it, all they really cared about was the casino. Mm-hmm. You can run any type of scam or not even a scam, anything you wanted. They didn't care. You didn't have to, you know, hey, if 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 somebody asked you for something and you went out of the hotel and you got it, them, fine, whatever they got for it. You want to sell something, you want to you wanna hawk Cuban cigars to guests, hey, go ahead. We care about the casino. They were raking in so much money there. They thought everybody else, there's plenty to go around. 
And, you know, he said that that's how it was. And now, you know, when he left, everything was, they were getting nickeled and dimed and they had to share yeah. this, they had yeah. to do that. They couldn't do this. This belongs to this other department. Where's the hotel's share? You know, where's their cut? Right. So he says, right. you know, yeah. Well, a, a hearty goodbye to Gary. Yeah. Hopefully he's playing some three-card Monty up there. I hope so. Uh, but uh, he'll be missed for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, so along with Gary, there are a lot of places that are gone. Yeah. Um, that are some are still here. I got a I got a small list. Some are still here, uh, but we've you and I have seen since we've been in town. Uh, we've seen a lot of implosions. Yeah. Yeah. I've only seen I've seen two in person. And the rest I, I saw on television. Yeah. Because they're, they're kind of a pain in the ass to get to, you know. And they, yeah. they do it very, very, very early in the morning. But uh, Sahara and Desert Inn, of course. Yes. You know, that gave birth to our alma mater, if you will. Yes. Not yes. Sahara, but... The, the uh, Sands. The, yeah, the, and, and the Sands, yeah. yeah. All of those kind of are, are sort of, sort of dunes, looped. Uh, yeah. they're, they're looped together, in my opinion. Uh, Sahara being the last one, I think, uh, yeah. of, of the group. So Sahara, Desert Inn, Sands, and Dunes. Yeah. In fact, they they imploded something around where the um, um, where the 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 Ferris wheel is. The the what do you call it? The link. Not long ago, a couple years, I mean, and they made no announcement of it. They didn't want anybody to know that they imploded the building. Uh, O'Shea's. O'Shea's. Thank yeah, you. It O'Shea's. was O'Shea's. O'Shea's was was uh, kind of a cool little place. Yeah. I mean, it was just a little dive uh, Irish. Yeah, a bar sort of. Yeah, um, and I actually knew the uh, the entertainer actor talent yeah. that played the leprechaun out front. Oh, is that right? Yes, uh, he was a very nice guy. Yeah, uh, and you know, I mean, uh, he he happened to be. What do we call? What do we? What do we? What's the name now? Little people, little person had to be a little person. Yeah, and so he took what jobs were available, and, yeah. and that that was a it was a, like a full time gig for him. Yeah, he would yeah. stand out and hawk the wares of O'Shea's, yeah. and, and yeah. you know it was kind. Of, I'm sure it was a little little depressing, <laughs> but uh, he <laughs> he made good. No money. pun intended. <laughs> That's right. Right. Exactly. Uh, but uh, the Sands, of course, gave birth to the Venetian. Yes, and. Um, I remember the beginnings of it. I remember the, you know, the when the sands uh, went down, and and then then it all started. It was back, yeah. you know, Sheldon Adelson, of course, sold Comdex, uh, and that's how he made the bulk of the money to finance the Venetian. Uh, so the Sahara went down, the Venetian went up, and and there we were. Yeah, there we were. Twelve weeks of eating sandwiches and learning. That's right. Learning what those were the best twelve weeks, and then it was all downhill from yeah, there. Yeah, it was. It really and was. then, and then we realized very much like Darwin, uh, Gary. I mean, uh, that that the the corporate lifestyle is is very damaging to you. Yeah, it's very difficult to live within that structure, and and still enjoy the hospitality industry. I, st- I think the hospitality industry can be enjoyed both directions, as a consumer, as a person staying in a hotel and a casino, and as the people that are servicing those individuals. I think yeah. there there can't. Gary had fun. Yeah, you know, never to love aside. Yeah. Um, and I, it's I think it's no longer the, the ability to have fun with those interactions transactions. Yeah, is gone. Yeah, and you know he would he would he would do magic in the lobby. For, for people and he was very, like I said he, he was highly skilled he was really really skilled mm. um, and he wrote a number of books on magic um, for, for magicians mm-hmm. so uh, he, he was um, uh, and that first time I had actually seen him was in the 90s uh, on TV in Japan mm. they had done a special on on uh, uh, Las Vegas right and they go in the hotel and and there's 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 Darwin sure. and he did a SpongeBob routine. <laughs> and and that that's that's the kind of guy he was. So he said, yeah, yeah, he liked it because you know he didn't mind hauling the bags. He was kind of a, a, a stocky guy. Yeah. And um, you know he he got to practice magic. And hey, come here over here, kid. I'll show you something or whoever it was. Uh, so they all liked him. And 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 he had uh, he had fun. Yeah. And uh, it was a, it was a I can I'm, I can see now where they might say you know oh well we don't want you you know doing a card trick. Somebody could get hurt. Yeah. Could be could be a liability. Yeah. 
Well, the, and I remember Ricky J. Cards as weapons. I yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another person who's who's left us. Yes, yes. Um, we lost but a lot of uh, or offended. You know, we might be offended by the Queen of Hearts or the King, yeah. of whatever. Yeah, it might be like voodoo or something. So I'm gonna I'm gonna t- I'm gonna say a restaurant name. All right. That was near and dear to our hearts back when we were when we, we were servicing our clients. Yes. Um, it's no longer there. Oh. And I only recently realized it wasn't any, were there anymore. Huh. And it, it was Pamplemousse. Oh, yes. I heard the owner died. Yes. I think. He, yes, yes. La Pamplemousse. Yeah. Grapefruit, of course, yes, in, in, grapefruit. in French. Uh, Pamplemousse was, was a very notable French yes, restaurant yes. in town. We at the Venetian sent people there often. Yes. And it, and they never let us down. It was fantastic. No, yeah, yeah. But yes, they're, they're, they are no oh, longer. That's too bad. Yeah, very sad. Um, and truly old school Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was... It was um, uh, well into the days of the Rat Pack. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I would be kind of sad to hear that. Yeah. Now, yeah. a restaurant uh, of equal reputation, of equal timing, uh, over on Sahara, down from the Sahara, uh, the former Sahara Hotel, uh, uh, it's still there. I, I still highly recommend it because of my dietary changes. I haven't been there in many, many years. Yeah. Do you remember what it is? On Sahara. As you as you go towards the freeway near Western, um, you definitely pass it on the way to the strip clubs. I can't think of it right now. Golden steer. Oh, of course, the golden steer <laughs> or the cow. Uh, yeah, with, yes, the, cow, with the big course. golden yes. cow. Yes, yes, yes of course. Um, I was just thinking about that. Yes, it's still I, there. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're if you're in Vegas and you're and you're going down the strip, make a if you're going north on Las Vegas Boulevard and you come to Sahara, make a left on Sahara, stay to yeah. your right. The Golden Steer is in a really really crappy looking mini mall yes. setup. Yes. Uh, look for the golden cow yeah. up there, steer, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, if you if you make it to the road called Western, or God forbid, you make it to the freeway yeah. uh, right now, uh, you have absolutely passed it. You passed it. Yeah. But the golden it's steer. Still there. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Yeah. And it's still good, and there are waiters there that have been there. I believe they installed them when they installed the doors. Wow. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, much like the cocktail waitresses at Caesars. Yeah. You only get the only reason you leave is you're dead. Yeah, you, you know, I'd written, if you remember, early on uh, one of the blogs uh, about old-time restaurants, and, and yeah. it, it, we had Pierrot's, uh, and I mentioned uh, Hugo Cellar downtown, if you're downtown. Right. So, right. yeah, some of the old, and, and, and there's and some of these are still there, but, yeah. but, but uh, and Pierrot's, mm-hmm. um, but, but yeah, some of the old ones, like La Pompomus, it's, it's yeah. sad to see them go. It is sad, it is yeah. sad, because I think they, 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 it was special, that, that's the word I always think of, it's, it's a, it was a special meal, it was a yeah. special time. It wasn't necessarily these, these ungodly four-hour, you know, nine-course meals, it yeah. was just a well-prepared, and you were cared for. Yes. They didn't hover. It was perfect. It was this yeah, perfect. But yeah, the, yeah they're, they're leaving us. Yeah. So, so. Um, I think people have also lost the art of the meal. You know, just yeah. the idea of the conversation. And well, you're not in a rush. And everything now is, is get you in, get you out. It's mm-hmm. noisy and, and go spend your money. You got to go over there. Oh, shit. We got to leave. You right. know, we got we to gotta be here. We're only here for, for three days. We got to, you know, yeah. everything is fast, fast, fast. And just. Oh, it is. Stop and, and smell and, the concrete. And, uh, you're right, you exactly. Uh, and I recently had a meal at um, at uh, uh, Cosmo. Yeah. At uh, their little district uh, food court, I'll call it. Yeah, little Cordish. High yeah, yes. Cordish. <laughs> high end. <food> yeah, <laughs> the uh, district something. Um, everything's a district here in yeah. Vegas now. It's district this, district that. Uh, but I was uh, with a, a very good friend of mine, Mary, and um, I we we ordered. And there's, of course, no place to sit because everything is communal. Oh, shit. Yeah, my favorite. It's like a fucking cafeteria. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And they, and School they, cafeteria they style. They pawn it off on this sort of millennial style. Everybody wants to talk and and, and, and get to know new people and this and that. Bullshit. It's, yeah, it's, you, you try to get them away from their phone. Exactly. Even with people exactly. they do know. They just sit there and they break yeah. out the phone. And if you notice, everything is... is uh, uh, a high boy situation. Yeah. Communal tables are this sort of butcher block, you know, with giant posts underneath and these incredibly uncomfortable chairs where your feet fall asleep if you're there for any longer yeah. than thirty yeah. minutes. And it's 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 awful. And you're right. It, it's this. It's the McDonald's way of seating. You know, back in the day, McDonald's. Uh, you know, very secretively, they made it hard plastic. Yes. 
They they made irritating music in the in the lobby. It was yeah. bright. It, it was, was uncomfortable, and you wanted to go because they wanted you, you could, to go. They wanted you to go. That's yeah. right. And, and the acoustics in there were bad. Yes, everything. Kids dropping something. There's always a whiny, bratty kid in there. Yeah. Somebody's crying. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And and people have fallen for this again. It's like oh, communal tables. You know. Oh, it's a wonderful meeting of community. No, it's not. It's Bullshit. uncomfortable, yeah. horrible, loud, and you want to go. Yeah. And 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 and, 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 and and you're 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 broke, and you're <laughs> broke. You're broke at the end. And there's always the the the, the schmucks at either either in the right in the middle of yeah. the communal table or at the ends of the communal tables with the laptops. Oh yeah, and they've yeah. taken up two spots. Yeah, and and God forbid, you know, and and they're and they've got the cords and everything else, and they oh yeah. I just so where did you end up eating? Did you find one in Lardo? Just, yeah, Lardo. It was okay. It was okay. I had a I had a, a a cheat sandwich that day, so that involved. Uh, 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 I, well, I'm, I'm hiding my eyes from John. Meat. Oh, yes. what kind of meat? Uh, oh, it was it was horrendous. It was yeah. it was the biggest cheat I could have. It was a a uh, um. They described it as a grilled cheese, which is bad enough. Yeah. With with barbecued burnt ends. Now, when I when I was a, a dedicated meat eater, burnt ends are are this wonderful part of barbecue oh. um, that are burnt ends. Exactly what it sounds like. Yeah, and they're charred and they're fatty and they're wonderful. And they put them on a sandwich and and then along with the with yes, the melted cheese and, and with a see. couple of numbers from well, for you, cardiologists. You know, yes, the thing is, again, as long as you, you you know you don't you're not eating that three times a day. No. Yeah, it's no big deal. No. Or, and I, I did the up. same thing. Oh, you went to the cheesecake. Yeah, did she yeah I did. <laughs> and it, oh, look what I, didn't, what I didn't eat all week, right? <laughs> right. Now and then, there, there, there you go. It's, it's fine. So continuing with the, the bygone era of Las Vegas, of course, you, know, we, we, you and I would book tours every place. Well, the, of course, the Hoover Dam is very famous. The Boulder Dam is starting to become not known anymore. It's the same thing. Um, uh, my, my, uh, I believe my father told me a story about working on the Boulder Dam. He also worked on, um, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. No, oh. uh, yeah. Uh, and the Boulder Dam is what, what it was yeah. called, uh, when it was first formed and first yeah. built. Um, and, uh, when you say that to people nowadays, they look at you with the, with that sort of puppy dog. Yeah. They, they can't tune it in. And, uh, but, uh, I, I I'm starting to not hear boulder dam even from old timers anymore mm. you know i don't hear it anymore and i i, I don't know I, I added that to the list because i was kind of sad yeah i was like huh well you know what else um i i had some some books written by old timers mm-hmm. about las vegas and i read these back in the 90s and mm-hmm. they said one thing that's nails on a chalkboard to them mm. was calling the town vegas it mm-hmm. was Las Vegas. Las Vegas, and I asked people about that, and they said, yeah, when I think about it, I say Las Vegas, the tourists say Vegas, and right. being from San Francisco, we say San Francisco, we don't say San Fran, that's right. irritating, we certainly don't say Frisco. Frisco. If, if you know somebody from San Francisco <laughs> and you want to piss them off, right. say, so how are things back in Frisco? Oh, yeah, we hate that. Almost, yeah, we hate that more than San Fran, <laughs> but Frisco is really bad. Yeah. Okay, so so I was cognizant and said, oh, yeah, and I've always called it Las Vegas Yeah. until they got that fucking hockey team, and then the guy says he's an out-of-towner. Well, we're going to call it Vegas, not Las Vegas, because that's what the locals call it, and I thought maybe the locals yeah. that moved here last week, <laughs> but right. the old-timers have been here forever. No, yeah. they call it Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. That's right. It yeah. doesn't say the sign doesn't say welcome to fabulous Vegas. Yeah. It says Las Vegas. You need the article there, god damn it. <laughs> yeah, you don't it's call the us meadows. You, <laughs> the meadow. Yeah. Uh you, yeah, you don't call us vegans. Yeah. It's Las Vegas. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um where was the first casino that you you plopped into on your first trip to Vegas? Oh, uh, Las Vegas, sorry. Yes, uh the Stardust. <laughs> ah. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. As uh, I'm showing John my notes. <laughs> It the says the Stardust. Stardust. Yes. That was the first, that not the fir- my first casino I plopped into. Yeah. It was the first uh, place I saw a show. Oh, is that right? Enter the Night. Oh, a very wow. cool show. Yeah, yeah, I remember yes. that. And and the, their their signature act was were the Gauchos. Oh yeah, and Argentinian yeah. cowboys. Yes, and they and they had these uh, 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 bolos. Yeah, uh, and they would uh, they would spin them and smack them on the floor rhythmically. It was so cool. Yeah, you know, so even cool. back in the late '90s, I came to Las Vegas. I stayed at the Stardust. It was thirty five dollars a night. Yeah, 
And it was great because it had a good location. I mean, at that time, there were still hotels around there. You still had, you know, the, the, the you had the Riv and you had the you had the Sahara. And then right. it was just up the street. You could walk to the to the newer ones. Uh, Venetian wasn't around yet. It's being built. You still had the desert. You still had the DI, the, the, the Desert Inn. Right. And they would have showgirls in the lobby from the show looking great. Yes. In the feather hats. That. And, and they would come and talk to you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and 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 give you a napkin to to wipe the drool or whatever, yes. you know, and and it was just that was great. Yeah, and I mean, there are no more showgirls, really. Are there any more shows? They're all gone now. No, there aren't really showgirl. You know, when ballets, when Follies Berger yeah, left, uh, and, and, and Jubilee, and Jubilee was I think the last uh, one. that was the true showgirls. Then there's yeah. the sad ones on the streets with the yeah. dirty, dirty Pikachu. Yeah, um, and, you ones. know. But um, I'll tell you what, there. I have to recommend the show. I, I definitely recommend the show. I think it's fantastic. I've seen it a couple of times. I have several friends in it, and they do that still. Oh, great. Fantasy at the Luxor. Oh, all right. The girls will come out into a little photograph area yeah. uh, for selfies and shots and so on and so forth. So, yes, they still do that. Yeah, that's So good, good for them, and I highly recommend the show. Fantasy over at the Luxor yeah. is fantastic. Hey, we, we went to the show. You and I went to Crazy Horse, didn't it? Crazy Girls. Crazy. It was Crazy Girls. They had, they also had a cabaret at the MGM. Uh, gra- uh, yes, Crazy Horse. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely it's not right. There the French anymore. cabaret. Yeah, yes. French cabaret. We yeah. went there once. It was a strange, strange show. Yeah, it was. But the girls were were the girls were great. Yeah, and the and the the acts were were very unique, but the 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 uh, the, the mid acts. They had one that was a puppeteer that did Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah, that guy was good. Um, and they had a comedian. It was very strange. But yeah, Crazy Horse. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. wonderful. Yeah, even Crazy Girls. I mean, it was it was low end. It was kind of raunchy. Yeah, why I not? mean, but it was old Vegas, kind of. I mean, it wasn't old old Vegas. Right. It was it was in between, but yeah. but it was there. And, and they tried to save themselves. They had a couple of porn stars that were the yes. the main acts. Jenna Jameson, I yeah. saw the one with Jenna. And, and, and if they yeah. were still around, got it, you you know Stormy Daniels would have been in on it. I would think so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because they didn't ha- they didn't really have to have very be very talented or anything. But. No. Yeah, no. we saw another one. There was one at the uh, at the Golden Nugget. You and I went. Uh, when we were concierge, we even went with our manager Nicole. Remember yes, that? I do remember that. Topless, or it was a topless show, but it was yeah. at midnight. It was, yeah. yeah. I, 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 oh my gosh! Now you're now you're stumping me. I'll I'll, I'll have to think about that. Um, uh, now I got a couple of really old ones. Yeah. Now I don't know. You know, I I don't know like uh, Chris over at Faces and Aces podcast. Uh, you know, he's been coming here for a long time. Yeah. But there, well, were, he's not that old though. Chris, uh, no, he's younger than I am. Yeah, I, I think I know his age, but I won't spoil it for the for the listeners. Yeah, uh, but he's younger than I am. Definitely younger than you. Yeah. Um, but uh, there are two that I, were still here when I got here. Yeah. The landmark. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And it looks like a, a, t- a lollipop. It was a, or actually it looks like, it looks like a s- little tiny version of the stratosphere. Oh, and it, yes, and it was downtown near the convention area. Yeah, uh, uh, what is now the convention area? It's called the Landmark, and it was supposed to be built. and And, and this is a, a testament to the fact that Las Vegas had difficulties building things then and now, including the Venetian. You know, we didn't even have our certificate of occupancy when we no, were, you know. <laughs> no, they did. And then the, it, it, if you remember, we've heard they were an open. We we're all going to spend a night in the hotel, yes. make sure everything worked. Right. Everybody go out and flush the Never toilet. Never happened. Never happened. They opened it that way. Sophia Loren had to stay across the street. Right. It, yeah, this is right. certificate of occupancy didn't come till they were having the party. Yes, they were having the party. They said we can't open the hotel yet until they have it. So the right. So the landmark. Was supposed. It was a hotel yeah. and, and casino. Was supposed to open in 1962, and as usual, which is normal for Las Vegas, especially na- current Las Vegas, yeah. the financing crapped out. Yo, so they couldn't open it until 1969. Ooh, yeah. And so it's now closed, but right next door to it, which uh, rarely do I hear anybody refer to it, know about it, have any idea. You know what this was right next to it basically across sort of a side street was the sport of kings do you remember that no i don't remember this sport yeah of kings. there's a very rare picture if you look it up on google look up the landmark hotel and there's a very rare picture right next to it you can see the sport of kings uh uh I'm, I'm not billboard uh, the, the neon sign it wasn't really yeah. a neon sign uh and you could see horse racing and it was only horse racing at the time 
No. Uh, and it was called the Sport of Kings, and they, they counted it as a casino because that's what it was. They did have live gaming there briefly, but then they stopped, and it was only a sports book. But yeah, many, many, many years ago that was there, but it was still there and open when I got here 27, I'm going to say 27, maybe 28, 27 years ago. And uh, then soon, you know, the town started to change and, 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 you know, build over things. So they were gone. But it, both of them were imploded. They were part of the implosion list, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Sporting Kings and Landmark, those are truly bygone era. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I have one. I have one here that you'll laugh at. Uh, and then we're gonna, I'm going to tease at the end here uh, the next episode. I believe we're on episode 103. Am I right? No. It, Something like that. Number one hundred was uh, was, was uh, uh, um, area fifty one. Area fifty one. We did so, a couple. Since yeah, then. I'm pretty sure we're on one hundred three. Um, but uh, we always talk about Las Vegas, but we also talk about Nevada. And I, as I was reading about specifically the landmark and the sport of kings, I read about the big casino. That's the name of it. The big casino in Tonopah, Nevada. No. Oh. Yeah. Um, the cultural mecca of the universe. Oh, it is. Yes, Tonopah, right. Nevada. Yeah, if you're a sagebrush. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in Tonopah, there is a Main Street, and Main Street also butts up against what is called Patrick, which for Tonopah yeah. was the red light district. Oh. Yes. Why do they name after a woman then? I don't See, know. See, that's even in San Francisco. Yeah. If you go south of Market, there's all kinds of little streets there. Most are named after women. Mm-hmm. There's a Minna Street and there's Sally, I think. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, those were named after uh, after prostitutes in the era. Yeah. No, I learned yeah. that one time. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. So the big casino was there in 1904, 1905. And they were, and I loved this, absolutely loved this. Uh, they were a restaurant. They offered a restaurant. This is all very rare. Yeah. I mean, that they were a big time, which is why they call it the big casino. This was a big deal. And then they offered what we offer now with all these new newfangled casinos. A restaurant. Yeah. A saloon. Mm. A dance hall. And here, here it comes, John. Yeah. A hurdy-gurdy. Oh, and for those of us who love language, oh, yeah. I have not heard that phrase in forever. And I'm going to say a big hello to my mom because yeah. she'll know what a hurdy-gurdy is. A hurdy-gurdy, as you mentioned prostitutes earlier, yeah. was just that. Yeah. It was offering offering out the services of young ladies wow. for People companionship. People would think that we did that, right? They used yes. to think our spa, that's what they did. <laughs> right. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh wow. So so the How much were they back then? The, <laughs> 25 cents. Yeah. Well, 25 I, cents yeah. for for I'm not quite sure what you received, but that yeah. was that was the price of Gary, us, you, got you, know, yeah, Gary you got screwed. Yeah, Gary got screwed. Now now the 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 big casino changed hands back and forth back and forth. But in 1913, the 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 town elders uh, I decided that that the hurdy gurdy was a problem. Yeah, it was against the uh, uh, the the morals of the town. That's exactly how they phrased yeah. it. Yeah, but uh, not to be not, not to be defeated. The hurdy and this was back in in if you're wondering, it was back in the time of Woodrow Wilson yeah. was president. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Uh, and and who do you think bought? The big casino, including the hurdy gurdy, ran the hurdy gurdy in the face of the town elders. Who do you think? I don't know who. The mayor. The, the federal government. Oh, really? Woodrow and his oh, boys. Of course. B- bought the land, bought the building, and kept running it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. See, yeah. my dad told me back in the day, uh, which would have been the forties, because uh, he was he was a World War II guy. That it was two dollars at the at the brothel. Yeah. And the thing to do was you paid with a two dollar bill, oh, and you nice. would rip the corner off of it. Right. And that meant that if you got one in change, a two dollar bill with a corner tipped off, uh, ripped off of okay. it. Okay. It meant that it had been used at the at the brothel. Okay. So I had a wallet of two dollar bills because I did get some as a tip at the Venetian. Right. They're rare. So did I. Yeah. And and yeah. my dad went through the wallet and he ripped the corners off of them. Wow. Just so, for, for old times' sake, I guess. I don't know. That's the to demonstrate. Give me that $2 bill. I want to demonstrate it. He already knows. You know, I already did, Bob. You told me this story before. I want to show you again. See, we would tear the corner off like this. Wow. That's yeah. a terrible magic trick. Yes. <laughs> All right. As I said, I was uh, to, to wrap it up today, 
um, uh, uh, the next episode we're going to put together for you guys is um, going to be casinos that, that never were. Hmm. I found a wonderful, wonderful list of all the Vegas casinos that never opened. Uh. I'm going to say a few. Okay. Okay. The Asian Resort and Casino. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cascada. I hadn't heard of that one. The Well... London Resort and Casino, and, and I'm going to read more about that one. I have to yeah. read about that one because that uh, my 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 wife was involved in the London Club. Yeah, yeah. She was actually a, a floor boss there. Uh, the Moon Resort and Ooh, Casino. That's another one I hadn't heard of. Palace of the Sea. Yeah. Um, the Playboy, which we oh, uh, yeah. I think all, we all know that one. Who who live here? Shenandoah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The Mister Vegas. He didn't ever get his going. The Titanic. Oh, I'm glad that one did. Right? Get, uh, yeah. Well, duh. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I, I I think the Titanic is a um, oh, what's the one that <laughs> the Fountain Blow, right? Yeah, the <laughs> Fountain Blow. Yeah. Uh, the World Wrestling Federation, which we already know oh, that, yes, which right. was going to take over for the, which one? Was it Debbie Reynolds? Debbie Reynolds. Yeah, and, exactly. That was a, a, a they did not work. And lastly, not this is just a, 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 a smattering of the ones that yeah. d- didn't work out. And last one, Xanadu. Oh. Yes. Yeah, there's other ones. I know there was a San Francisco-themed one. We'll talk about that, too. Yeah. And there's Either one There's one they're trying to do the, with Chinese money yeah. uh, down the street. Have they, have they started it? No, no. The financing is still a problem. That now they're saying maybe next year. Maybe next year. Uh, the, the echelon that yeah. used to be the echelon yeah, property, right. and it's supposed Another to be one that never. Yeah, never it's supposed worked. to be dedicated to being a Hong Kong lavish, you know, yeah. thing, and they just can't get their their ducks in a row. Yeah, or Peking ducks. Peking ducks in a in a row. <laughs> in a row yeah. Yeah. Well, my my advice to them: don't charge for parking. Yeah, don't charge. For and you get locals to show up. Right, and have yeah. showgirls. Yeah, and, and have, have them, showgirls and have them give you napkins. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> have, have but, showgirls in the lobby. But I I hope everybody enjoyed this. Uh, I know John and I did, and um, you know we John and I have always made it clear that there are parts of Vegas, a, a large number of parts of Vegas, we wish would come back. Yeah, uh, they probably never will. Uh, but uh, the we hope we have some fans out there that agree with us. Uh, but uh, uh, and again, uh, you know, a heartfelt you know goodbye to Gary Darwin. Yes, uh, look him up. Uh, I'm sure you know the, with the wonders that is the interweb. Yeah, uh, just put his name in there. Darwin spelled cor- Darwin. Uh, yeah, no, that was actually a stage name. Yeah, for him, and and he used he prefer he generally when when he called on the telephone he goes hey it's Darwin. Okay. He would go by Darwin. Yeah. Um, his real name was Gary Metter, just like Meadows. He, he used to say was, that's what brought him to Las Vegas. It was, it was fate. And nice. he came here around the same time as Siegfried and Roy. Okay. And he knew them both very well. And he told good stories about Siegfried and Roy. So look him up, Gary yeah. Metter, Gary Darwin. Gary Darwin. Yep. Uh, and Gary I'm sure Darwin. Google will have some very interesting information about that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we hope he's up there and having looking down and 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 laughing at all of us, probably. Yeah. But uh, for John, this is Jamie, and we will see you very very soon. Thanks to everyone listening and watching. You can catch the Pod Bay Door on the Podbean app or any of your favorite podcast apps, including iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, and Stitcher Radio. You can watch the show on our YouTube channel at the Pod Bay Door Podcast. Please download, like, and subscribe. Our social connectivity screen is coming up. Check in with us on Facebook, Twitter, and WordPress. The Pod Bay Door is closed and... Hey everybody, thank you very much for tuning into the show. We would love to hear your show suggestions and comments. If you are watching on our YouTube channel, please click to subscribe. You can also connect with us on Facebook using at PBD Podcast, on Twitter using at TPBD Podcast, and on WordPress at thepodbaydoor.wordpress.com.